Draw slowly, close your eyes. With a deep inhalation. Yogena chitta se padena vacham malam sharira se chavaitya kena yopa karotam pravaram muninam patanjalim pranjaliran tosmi. Om Shanti 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 Right, so um, good evening everyone. So we will get started. Okay, so we have been discussing the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So we talked about chapter one, chapter two. So chapter one, it talked about the key concepts. What is the yoga? What is the journey? Where it starts, where it ends, right? And then uh, chapter two, basically it start to give a very logical steps of what we need to follow. Number one, the moral guidelines, things to do, things we should avoid. And then yoga asana, then why yoga asana? Because it has three things. Number one is the bodily movement, the breath, and keeping in awareness, the sati, right? So be in the present moment. Pay attention to what you are doing right now, right? Then uh, we talked about uh, pranayama. So Patanjali says you have to master the uh, yoga asana part of it, where you master the movement, breath, and the um awareness so that you know you can uh, connect with the pranavayu right so pranavayu if you say now we have five people here so whatever i inhale whatever i exhale whatever you inhale whatever you exhale are the same right so i might exhale i i will inhale i will exhale you are around you will inhale you will exhale Right? A cat is around, cat inhales, cat exhales. A dog is around, same thing. Right, So, if at all we have a body, if at all we have a self inside, we will come to that today. Who is this self inside? Then the common factor right now, what we all consume is the air. Right, So, that particular air how we regulate it inside, how we make this particular system rich with the air is what you call as the pranayama. Then we just knock over the mind aspect of it with the pratyahara, right? And then, so basically we will do something without expecting a return. We will not accept something without, you know, having another thought behind that. Right? Then we talked about dharana, dhyana, samadhi. So we said dharana is basically try to focus on one point. Dhyana is try to focus on one point for a prolonged period. Right? And then samadhi is you focus on something for a prolonged period where the I factor, you are not there anymore. You have totally dissolved yourself in that. Right? So now, today, um, so then thereafter, we talked till like 13th Sutra, right? So from 13th Sutra onwards, in chapter 3, Patanjali talks about the supernatural powers, what a mind can do, supernatural memory conditions you can achieve, supernatural analytical skills that you can get, right? But before we go into those aspects, we should know how, what is this particular consciousness what we talk about? What is this awareness that we talk about? And how we reach there, right? So, um, we will talk about it. And um, we will, let me show this particular slide, right? So, we talked about all these things. So, we talked about the Samyama. Samyama is the ability for you to you know, the practice, the dharma aspect of it, the potential state, 
and the refinement, the lakshana, the qualities of it, and then avastha, right? So the peak of it. So we will come to those things, right? So always when we are learning something like this, it's good to go from known to unknown, right? So we all belong to either one philosophy or one a particular religion and all these kind of things. So always it's good that you try to, first of all, understand through what you know, through that philosophy, then you try to go to the unknown. Otherwise, everything just looks like a movie, right? And um, you will not understand it, right? Good. So, first of all, let's try to understand what is this mind field. And we talked about the thoughts. We talked about the perceptions. Right? We talked about these things and how these things are interlinked with each other. Right? So we know that we are in a samsaric cycle. Right? We are in a cycle. Right? We are in a samsaric cycle. So if we are in, if we have gone to moksha or if we had gone to nirvana, then there is no a particular self right now. Right? So in that case, so we would have died in some life. Right? At a particular point, we would have died. We would have died million times. We don't know how many times we have lived and died. Right? Then, so basically, you uh, two people got together and a small uh, cell is being created. Right? It can be a human cell, it can be an animal cell, whatever you call it, inside a womb like this. Right? Then, so this particular cell became two cells, four cells, eight cells, 16 cells, 32 cells, 64 cells. Likewise, it grew, 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 grew. And then now there is a baby inside, right? And then this particular baby came out to the world, which is the first picture we uh, I have shown, right? So um, now this particular baby, so when a baby is being born, there are some people being born to this world with color blindness. Do you have the eyes? Yes, but you don't see the colors. Instead, you see black and white, right? And then some people uh, are born through a very good memory capacity. So these are the people who score very good marks in their school grades. And some people, they come up with so much of creativity. That's why everybody is not a singer. Some people have driving skills, right? The technical skills, the mechanical skills. Some people have the electronic skills. Some people have the artistic skills, right? And um, so likewise, there are different, different abilities. So everybody being born to this world are not the same, right? They are different from each other. So we'll understand why they are different, right? So then once you were born, right? Anybody in this world, once you were born with these differences, so one difference is male and female, and colorblind or full visual arrays there, right? Some people are deaf. Some people are born without a tongue. Some people are born without the mouth. Some people are born with four legs, two people mixed together, right? And some people, when, when they are being born in the middle, they die in, inside the womb itself. There is a reason for that, right? Spiritually or philosophically explainable reason is there for that, right? And then some people are born with hair, without hair. Sometimes black people, but you are born with uh, blonde hair, right? Some people are born with less fingers. Some people are born with one lung. Some people are born with certain conditions in the heart, right? So, so there's n number of ways, but a person is being born, right? Then when you come out to this world, right? So you come with the water bag, soon the water bag is broken. You start to cry and inhale, right? So that's the moment where you uh, land on, the, on this planet right, on this planet, wherever, right. So then at the point you are being born, you don't have a language, right. You don't have a language, you don't know, we call this color red, this color yellow, 
this skin is brown, that skin is white, this is good, this is bad, I like this, I hate this, right? That business is not there by the time you are being born, right? So all these are, so, so how that happens then? Right? So by the time if you are not born, if you are born, if you don't know these things, by the age of two, three, four, five, you basically program this child. So if this person is being born in Sri Lanka to a so-called Singhala Buddhist family or so-called Hindu uh, Tamil family or India or Africa or Britain or Australia, depend on where you are being born, right? You start to talk a particular language. You start to give values to a race. Say, I am this race and this is my skin color. So white is good, brown is bad, or brown is good, white is bad. I belong to this religion, right? And um, this is my value system, and this is my philosophy. And I call some person a mother, and I call some person a father, brother, wife, and I will have certain education, right? So when you go on, go on, go on, so I will have education, I will have loans, I will have credit cards, I will have children, my political view, my beauty, I define what is beautiful and I define what is not beautiful, right? And a car, a house, all these identities start to come, right? But at the point you were born, if you were being taken out and given to somebody else, and then that person says, I am your mother, the child will call that person the mother. Right, so that is a very good example to understand that when I am born, I don't know who my mother is. When I'm born, I don't know who my father is, right? When I'm born, I don't know who my enemies are. Right now, each one of you will have a certain preferred people in the family, some unpreferred people in the family. If you really see how that happens, because you were programmed, these people are not good. These people did bad things to us in the past. This person treated my father like this, my mother like this, to you like this. They talked um, harsh words, rude words, right? So what, what are harsh words? What are rude words? All these are predefined. Predefined by your surrounding, right? So in Singhala, sometimes we use this word uber, right? Within guys, this word is very uh, popular, right? We call a person uber, right? So uh, one would understand this word as a very dear word, right? So when you say uber, they say um, it feels closeness, right? Another person would uh, take that word as a very offensive word. How that happens is basically um, it depends on the environment you were brought up and how that particular word was defined to you. Yes. Right. So basically we need to understand by the time we came to this world, we came with like a zero inventory. We did not have a language. Right. And when I was born, if I was raised in a Chinese environment, I'll be, be speaking Chinese today. Right. Or German, I will be speaking German, but Singhala, English, Tamil, so I speak those. Right. So then what happens is over time, you mold this good and bad. So for your mind to be, for your mind to develop, the mind always requires two sides of something. I like this, I dislike this. I prefer this than this one. This is good, this is bad. If you see, always your mind will not have for, for a particular thing, what you see, what you hear, your mind will have, I like this, or I don't like this. That music is uh, nice, this music is not nice. And that color is good, this color is not. So the mind will always have these two sides. There is nothing in this world in your mind which only have one. Right? Think of an example, your own mother. Your own mother is good for you. Right? Or somebody else is bad for you. A terrorist is not good. 
uh, your own military is good, right? Something like that. So try to understand something which your mind has not put these two sides to. Good, bad, like, dislike, black, white, likewise. No. The mind, for a mind to sustain always, it, ha it, it takes the form, right? You take, give a perspective, you show something, you hear something, the mind won't to put a label. Uh, this is in my good side. I like this. I don't like this. Likewise, right? So now what happens is from your childhood, when you grow up, grow up, grow up, these good and bad parts also start to grow up. Right? So you will have uh, strong likenesses to certain things, strong dislikes to certain things. Right? So then what happens is again, when you go further old, further old, now you get older. Right? Now your limbs are not functioning properly. You have money, but no happiness, achievements, hopes are lost, family is lost. Right? At the end of the day, think of each and every one of you, whatever the condition that you are living in right now, one day you are going to, so you have particular achievements in your young age, right? When you have the blazer and the tie and everything, you have particular achievements. A point comes in your life, these achievements become totally useless. Each and every one of us, right? Or my education qualification, the job that I did, the post that I hold, held, and um, the things that I collected, my vehicle, my own house, I'm not being able to walk to the second floor at a point, right? So when so the old age comes, so everything that you have collected becomes uh, no use. All the money that you have created cannot give you any happiness. And each and every one of us are going to lose our family members. It can be your husband, it can be a son, it can be your mother, parents or grandchildren. We are going to lose, right? And regrets for not doing certain things in your young age, right? So, and also the body is not going to function well. So, you have your arm, but this arm I can't lift, right? I can't lift. There will be a situation like this will come to each and every one of you. This is guaranteed. I'm not guaranteeing. The dharma itself is guaranteed, right? And then, so in our life, we think, okay, so in our young age, um, we should get married. Why? Because otherwise I will die alone. Then once we get married, we think, okay, we both are going to die alone. So we need some young people to look after us. Then we say, um, not only that, uh, I have a big surname, so I need to maintain my surname. And who, who, who is going to take over my property? Who is going to take over my this luxurious car, right? So who is going to take over my money? So it should not go out from all this. That framework is being created at in between these two stages, right? The born to young age, right? So because of that, I do all these things. But when this comes, when you are going to go, just before a few seconds, you need to understand we all are going to die alone. How much people we have around us, we are going to die alone for sure. Right? Nobody can help us to die alone. Right? Or nobody can ease the pain while we are dying alone. So it's a moment where you are like this or you may be getting a very painful heart attack and you can't bear the pain, losing the breath, breath shortens, breath shortens, you try your level best, the breath doesn't come in, and then it will stop, right? Or you will suddenly die. Some people are there while they're speaking, they just die and fall. Some people die and fall, some people fall and die, right? So this is the nature. Then what happens is at the point of your death, based on the storehouse of your chitta, right? It will create the tanha. If you have a tanha, right? There are moments when you are going to die or when you are even in sickness, you have so much of uh, greed or desire for something. Uh, so with that thought, when you die, obviously the samsaric cycle will continue. 
right? So again, when we, we are here, then again come here, again come. So based on those karma, now, based on those karma, basically, it will decide whether you should have full vision or color blindness, whether you should have uh, full frequency to your ears or not, whether you should have 10 fingers or eight fingers, whether you should have a neck or born without a neck, right? So likewise, it will get decided. Then again, you go through this cycle, again, based on the life th that you spend, you will have certain desires by the time that you end, end your life, so even being angry to hurt somebody is a desire that you have, right? So with those desires, again, based on your karma, so this cycle will keep on going. So between from here to death, we will have a storehouse of impressions, um, thoughts, perceptions, everything. We collect, collect, collect and put it here and suddenly gone. So it again comes, again, somebody programs us, again, we die. Right? So this is a cycle. Are we good with that? Good in the sense we have to accept it, right? Good. <laughs> okay. Then now this is very, very important, right? So this I have got from the Buddhist philosophy. Why I have taken this from Buddhist philosophy is the Patanjali's Yoga Sutra. Basically, there are places one to one it matches with the Buddhist philosophy. Also, this is the same uh, philosophy which is clustered into different, different parts, explained in Hinduism as well, right? You, you take the Sai Baba's philosophy, you take uh, Jesus's philosophy, all these basically talks about the same, this thing, right? Now, listen very carefully, right? So we'll try to understand this. It's important that we get it, right? Now, what's happening with this? Okay, good. I can see all and I can see the slide. All right. So, <clears throat> so we learned something called avidya, right? What is avidya? For an example, uh, you, you, you use YouTube, right? Or you, you, you like a particular movie. So somebody asks you, what's your favorite movie? So if you have an answer, okay, I have a favorite movie, meaning... Right, so uh, I have a favorite movie, meaning uh, there are certain impressions, there are certain parts of that particular movie which is inside your head, right? So how many times that you watch this movie again and again and again and again, is it present moment? Is that movie happening right now? No, that movie has been televised some time back. So now let's go inside the movie. So you see the movie. So you go to a movie theater, right? Inside the movie theater, they switch off the lights and they switch on the projector. And then there is a screen and the speakers. And then you see a movie and you hear the sound, right? So in there, in there so sometimes when you see, let's say Jurassic, world, right? A uh, dinosaur comes and just roar at you and then you get scared. Sometimes you get scared, sometimes you get, you know, astonished and then you hold somebody else and all these kind of things. Oh, you cry. You cry. In the movie. A lot of people cry, right? A lot of people cry, right? Some people go to the movie with drinks because they know to watch this movie, I need to have a certain <laughs> standard that I have to maintain my mind, right? For that, they drink while watching the movie, right? So, at the end of the day, when, you, when you're coming out from the movie hall, it's just some light, some surface, and some electronic waves, right? Why you cried? It's because how you perceive that inside your head. Electronic waves, light waves, and a... Um, rough surface or a solid surface. So you had this for one hour, two hour. And the moment you switch on, basically, even if you're crying, once you switch on, this crying mood also comes to a normal state. You feel like it's okay. 
right? So at the end of the day, there was no movie. There were no characters. There were nothing shown in the movie. Everything is computer animated something, let's say. And the sound was just electronics, right? Communicating. And uh, there was nothing, right? Especially for an example, if you take a superhero movie, people are flying. Anybody flying? No. Everything is happening inside a small studio. But you are crying, right? So a story is created. Characters are created. And the characters are given what? Good and bad, like, dislike, black, white, right? And then based on what your mind is being filled up with from your birth, either you cry or you be uh, you will become very happy. Right? This is a great example for Avidya in Singhala, Mode and the Right? So you look at something, when you don't understand the true nature of it, you get a false idea over it. That's what you call as avidya. Right? So that's where we said not having the spiritual knowledge is avidya. What is spiritual knowledge? To have the knowledge or you know how to look at a thing in its true nature. Right? So when you don't have it, it's avidya. For an example, you see a beautiful girl. Now you can't, when you go home, you can't think about her. You can't eat. You keep on thinking about her, right? You want to hear her voice. So you will call her, you will message her, you will read your chat, blah, 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 all this kind of thing. The moment you stop it, you miss her. Then you send missed calls, right? There are different ways of um, transmitting how to say that I miss you, right? All these things are happening. But if you really look at the true nature of it, that's something, it's a body made out of five elements, right? And that body has a mind. So the mind has its own thought flow. And based on that thought, so that thought flow having certain perceptions and your thought flow having certain perceptions. And when these two communicate with each other, either you feel good or bad. The other person also, you feel good or bad. So these are the two sides of the mind. So if the good part goes up, you will like her. If the good part goes down, you will not call her. Right? So this mind have this determinative faculty, whether I like it, I don't like it. The two sides. Right? So for you to decide this, you have certain thoughts filled inside your head, which is called the avidya. If you are a person, if you can look at things in a middle path, or we call it upeksha, there's nothing good, there's nothing bad, everything is good, everything is bad. In a way, then you will not attach to something. Right? So that is what we call as avidya. Now for an example, so we'll understand that. Right? Or we'd say, you take a wedding. On a wedding day, the bride and the groom looks fabulous. Right? But yesterday, they don't look fabulous. And tomorrow, they don't look fabulous. Today, you look fabulous. Right? And um, so the bride looks nice. So people go and everybody checks out the bride. Bride looks nice. Bride sari was this. Bride blah, blah, blah. And they were wearing this flower, that flower, everything. Hair was having flowers and all these things. Right? But it's the same person. It's just five elements. It's a person with a manas, with thought flows, apart from the five elements, five senses, and the indriyas. Everybody has hands, everybody has legs, everybody has a body, everybody has these uh, organs. Right? But on that day, icing is put on. Right? So, it's called it avidya. Right? Then, because of avidya, it's actually very easy from, rather than from left to right, it's easy to explain this from right to left. Right? So, from avidya, because of you having these um, wrong perceptions about things, not having the right spiritual knowledge, you will have desires. 
you will have certain needs. As soon as you have needs, you will have a samsaric cycle. By the time you die, if you are a person, you like animals, you like dogs. Next birth, you might be born as a dog. Right? If you like to kill animals, if you enjoy killing animals, you will be born as an animal which is going to get killed. The karmic formula is very simple and it's very precise. Whatever you like in this life, you get it in next life, for sure. Any religion, any philosophy, you like something in this life, you get it in next life, right? Now don't mix it up. Okay, I like a Benz car in this life, I can't buy it. Next life, I will get a Benz car. It's not that, right? Maybe you will be born in a family which washes Benz cars. Because you like the car, so you will be born in a family where you go as a domestic servant, you wash the men's car because you like it so much, you like to be around that, you like to touch it, you get the smell inside the interior, ooh, and all that, yeah, you will get there. Right? So another good example. Yeah. So this is not an example created by me. This is a very strong example. So that's why I want to say it. The womanizers, the men, right? The womanizers will be born as brothel women in next life. What you like, what you become, right? So at the end of your life, if you are away from avidya, if you learn how to see the true self in everything that you see here, everything around you, then what happens? Then you will basically, while when you die, you will be zero desires. Then your samsaric cycle stops. Right now, how to go there is what all Patanjali to Lord Buddha, everybody is trying to explain. Right now, you are deeply down with avidya, so many perceptions in your head, so many ideas in your head, so many rights, good, bad things are there in your head. Because of that, you have a samsaric cycle. When you have a samsaric cycle, when you are born, you will have these organs, senses, but you will have a manas or a chitta, right? thinking faculty. Even a dog has a thinking faculty. You know? That's why the dog doesn't bark at you, but bark at the thief. Right? Why? Because the dog is being programmed. I am your owner. I love you. I feed you. You are my dog. Everybody else is not bad, including the squirrel. My dog is there. Yeah, it even hates squirrels, birds, everything. Right? So, when you have a samsaric cycle, you have the consciousness. When you have the consciousness, you have these two things called Nama and Rupa. Nama is the names that we give. We define that's a dog, that's a man, that's a bag, that's a light, that's a computer, that's a camera. Rupa is the physical form of everything. So you name something and you have a physical form. So for that, we call it Nama and Rupa. Now, when there is Nama Rupa, you have the senses. Right? So you have the five senses and the manas. Right? Then what happens is when you have Nama Rupa, when you have senses, what happens? You touch it. Right? You start to, we call it um, gatena, or we call it, you uh, get attached to it. Let's call it attachment. Once you attach to something, what do you have? The feelings, impressions over that. Right? For an example, a hand, a girl's hand, smooth hand. Right? I like to hold her smooth hand. Right? So the sense is your body. This is the Nama Rupa. Nama is the hand. Rupa is this particular form. I touch her. So I felt her, meaning the touch. So I felt a soothing feeling when I touch her is a feeling. Then what happens? The greed attachment starts. So because when I hold her hand, it feels so good, I want her to be mine. Right? I want her to be mine. Then, 
that basically is the cause for a bhava. Bhava is the life, right? And that causes for another life, right? So you are being born. Now, when you are being born, definitely you have to face sickness. Sicknesses will happen from your starting to end. Old age will happen inevitable. Death is for sure. Even if the benzka or the decree or the house or anything is unsure, death for sure is sure. And because of these things, because when you lose your dear ones, you get the sadness. Sadness and all the resultant causes are there. Right? So let's start from the other side. Right? So we as humans, we have sicknesses. We get old. You know, I have gray hair, right? I'm very young, but I have gray hair, right? So, and the death is inevitable. Maybe the next moment I might die. You might die. All of you might die. Right? Next, while you are eating, you might choke the food and you will die. Simple as that, right? You Tomorrow you go to a nice waterfall. Why you go there? To have fun, right? To entertainment, to relax. But some rubbish will come from the top and you will be, you know, you will die. While you're driving, you will die. So people say sometimes, you know, don't say these things, you will die. No, understand it, right? As far as you understand it always, at least you'll be careful. At least you will avoid a particular event, right? Then, so all these things, so old age comes and you lose your partner, you lose your son, you lose your parents. That leads to sadness. And sadness leads to this cause, another cause, another cause, another cause, all likewise, so the life goes on. So all these things is inside a jati. Right? You are being born. You have a life form. Right? Why you have jati? Because of a bhava. There is a bhava. Me bhava edi kela likewise they sing songs. Me bhava edi api ekveva nabana bhava edi vengveva get out likewise. Right? The bhava. Right? So bhava happens because of a reason. What is that reason for your bhava is a particular desire, attachment or greed. How that greed or attachment happens is because of a feeling, right? The touch, right? How we perceive that touch is through the senses. Through what are we perceiving that senses, right? That is due to a nama and a rupa, right? If humans are being programmed to live with monkeys, male humans live with female monkeys, from the start of the world and the female monkeys are living with male humans, something like that. Or the, or the male monkeys are living with female, some other panda, okay? If the world was programmed like that, it would have happened like that. The Nama Rupa would have gone like that. But the world is in such a way, no human, human, man to man, man to woman. Uh, dog to the female, then panda to the female, whatever, right? That's how it's going on. So this particular Nama Rupa is being attracted like that. How you perceive something called a Nama Rupa is because of the consciousness, because of your mind. The mind only tells that's Amal, that's Nimal, that's Kamal, right? This is Bharata, this is Varuni, this is Dushyanti, right? A nama is given to you. According to that nama, a rupa is assigned to you. I can't look at Jayantan and I will not call him Varuni because that nama is being assigned to this particular rupa. So that is Jayantan. Right? So that happens through the consciousness. As far as we have this consciousness, meaning the likeness, dislikes, good, bad, we will have a samsara. Right? And why are we believing in this samsara is due to the avidya. So that is basically the underlying cycle of things. Right? From zero, how you become a hero, or from hero, how, how you have become zero. Right? 
are we clear up to this point are we okay understood right good so if you understand that then so how then what do you, what do you mean by focus at one point being aware one pointedness dharana dhyana samadhi and how we go there so we do have so the mind is made out of so there are sensual organs and then so i is there there's an object and then the mind is connected to the eye so you perceive that object takes it inside your head and you process it right and it goes to your storehouse right so based on that you will have a perception i like that flower i do not like that chair right so always whatever said and done i read in your good books or in your bad books that's why it's there in your storehouse if it was neither in the good books or bad books it's not in there in your head you have a middle way of looking at it it doesn't need to you know register inside right so avidya is actually the reason for all this process right so the right consciousness so now when we say when we start of a yoga session when we say focus on your breath right what are we trying to do is basically when your body is still when you are seated and your body is still right what is the only movement you can feel the breath when you are still only movement that you can feel is your breath so that particular breath we take as a we call it a nimitti we take it as a um, focal point otherwise you know there are so many things happening inside the body even every cell getting destroyed and being born again right even though we can't see it it's happening that fast right but the observable thing to us is our breath right so what how we should focus on that is basically now when we breathe in breathe out we don't say that breath is good this this breath is bad likewise we don't put it but we also still say that's a short breath that's a long breath today my nasal tract is blocked so the breathing is not good still we have perceptions even about that so when you meditate we what we say is just breathe whether it's short long blocked not blocked doesn't matter as far as you are living which means you're breathing right so you need to look at your breathing like a witness right now what is this witness theory is imagine there is an accident in the road on the road right the nearest junction now imagine now imagine okay imagine already you have gone there right imagine there is a accident in the nearest junction right now two vehicles have come and knocked each other right so you are a person either who is walking by or watching this whole scene from an up upstair right from a building or from long distance why you are watching that is because you heard a sound so when you heard a sound you are being programmed when you hear that type of sound that's a breaking sound and when you hear a scream with a breaking probably it should be an accident so from your birth to now you are being programmed thoughts are being put to your head to come to that conclusion when you hear that that's what happens simply right then when so you see this particular accident so a red car and a white car hit each other one person died and there is water or the leakages from the vehicle on the road all these things are there right now if you are a person who drove either red car or the white color car you are involved in that you are involved in that particular accident you drove the other person drove you collided right now if you are a witness are you part of this particular incident you are not right even though you were there in the scene 
dream. Listen to this very carefully, right? Even though you are there in the scene where the thing is happening, even if you go to the courts, nothing will happen to you because you are a witness, right? So why does a court requires witness? To explain what happened. How can he explain what happened? Because he observed it. Agree to that point? Have you become a witness of anything? Have you become a witness of your cat uh, catching a bird and the bird is now struggling to die and the cat is waiting? Have you seen that? Right? If you haven't seen that, you should really see that, right? Okay, good. So, something like that. Or oh, have you seen um, people fighting on the road? Shouting, right? Have you seen people like, like you know, while you are going on the train, so many things people are doing in the roadside. Some a person may be going to a shop, somebody is selling something, and somebody may be washing the clothes, somebody is getting ready to go to the school, or a school is operating, or people are going to office, people are driving, all this is there, right? So now, listen to this carefully, right? While you are going on the train, when you see these, everything happening outside, what are you doing about it? What are you doing? So are you going to correct, hey, you are not walking properly, walk properly, wear the tie properly, you are driving the vehicle wrong. Are you doing that? No, right? So the witness's job, right? Get this carefully. If you get it, your life will not be the same from this moment, right? A witness, get it, please get it, right? A witness doesn't do anything. A witness, watch it, right? Witness, watch it. He sees a scene, something has happened, but you don't do anything about it, right? So what is being in Atman? What is being in Sati? What is being in consciousness? What is being in Sihir? All these things, meaning, Thoughts are happening in your head. Perceptions are continuously happening in your head. You gather new perceptions, you give a judgment, right? You again come to say good, bad, you get angry, you get laughter, you feel loved, you feel like uh, calmness and all these kind of things are happening inside your mind, right? Being in sati or being in consciousness meaning you being aware of all these things happening, but you don't do anything about it. The moment, so now you see, right now, take the same example. So while you're going in the train, you see people are doing certain, certain things. You see a shop man is selling something, right? Um, on the road, selling vegetables, selling oranges, right? So then you suddenly get attached to that and then you suddenly see the price. Oh my God, the price is very low, right? In this area, oranges are really low, right? What I should do is I should get down from the next station and then I should go and pick some oranges. Now, are you a witness? You witnessed. In the past, you witnessed. But now you are part of the whole scene, right? So as soon as you become a part of the whole scene, what happened to your train journey? It stopped, right? Because you were going in the train, suddenly you saw something, there was a desire came out, right? Whether it's a good desire, bad desire, it doesn't matter. The desire came out, and then now you engaged with that thought, right? As soon as you engage with something on the roadside, you stop your train journey, right? So being in conscious, being in sati, being in um, 
awareness. So we call it either awareness, consciousness, sati, sihir, atman, right? All these things we call as far as you are an observer, what is happening in your mind. You just become an observer. So don't, don't try to you know what do what we did with the orange guy. Right? He is selling oranges. Is it expensive or not? It doesn't matter. You just see a particular person selling oranges. At some point, when you improve this, what happens is you don't even know whether he's an orange person. Because now, when I see the orange seller, I am telling, he's selling oranges. So he, I have identified that is a male. Selling is particular activity that we have given in the present context. Oranges. So for that fruit also, now it's a fruit apparently, given a name, a color, a shape, a, a taste and everything. Right? All these are perceptions. All these are every single thing what you got into your head is a perception. Right? The moment you get tangled with that, you lose your sati, your awareness. Right? The, as far as you are a witness to that, so basically you see, you close your eyes and you just keep on watching what is running in your mind. Right? So if you get used to do this, you will understand what we explained some time back. Um, yeah, what we explained some time back, there is a thought comes, then another thought comes, then another thought comes, then another thought comes. So a thought process how it goes is one after the other after the other after the other no two thoughts will happen in parallel ways it doesn't happen we feel like it's happening because it's happening so fast right now you are listening and watching right so you think no i can watch and listen in the same way no it doesn't work like that you watch listen watch listen watch listen and that is happening so fast right imagine there is a road so again, now you are a witness. You are watching out from your window. So you see the road. So a vehicle is going in this speed. Right? Now you see the vehicle from here to here. Now the vehicle speed is increasing. Now it's increasing. Now it's increasing. What happens when the speed increases? You start to not to see the vehicle. Because the vehicle is going fast like this. That's the speed of our mind. Right? We don't see the gap between, right? But if you are a witness, so as far as you are tangled with your mind, right? So you are going out and then you see somebody, you talk to somebody and that person talks some gossip and then you Google that particular gossip and then you watch some videos on that and then you talk about that to another person and then you start to hate some person and then you get into this thing and then you go to an Arabale or something like that, I don't know. I'm not, a, I'm not criticizing that or anything, right? So something like that happens, right? So you went out to see your friend, but now you stop at fort, right? That happens if you try to talk or correct or observe or you try to get involved with that orange vendor. As far as you just watch, okay? So I'm here, I'm in the train. I'm watching everything is passing by. So what? I don't attach with anything like that. You can actually be in awareness. So that you know what all your senses are taking. Whenever you get angry, now you know, okay, I'm getting angry, right? Because something is happening and according to my mind, it's not right or it's not the way I want. Or it's not the way I, I would like to see. Right? At that moment, an anger comes. So if you are a witness, you know, okay, now the anger is coming. Fine, let it be. Now the sadness is coming. Now the happiness is coming. Right? So this watching job, you have to do. That's number one. Number two is this watching job, you need to do in a middle path manner. Meaning, whatever you see, you don't give a judgment. That is good. That is bad. That is good. That is bad. You don't. That is right. That is rich. That is poor. That is posh. That is not. That is sophisticated. 
stupid likewise. You don't give any judgments, right? As far as if you can continue this, then you are coming to a level which we can at least talk about dharana dhyana samadhi. If you don't become a witness, dharana dhyana samadhi is just entertainment. Right? It's just you can go and talk to uh, talk to somebody. So we are not learning this Patanjali Yoga Sutra to sit for an exam, exam or score some marks. Right? We are doing this to improve ourselves. Right? That's the only objective here. So that's why I don't ask even what is this sutra and that is a stupid question. What is the meaning of this sutra? What is the meaning of this word? I don't understand why would even you learn the sutra. That is also not important. At the end of Patanjali Yoga Sutra, once you learn this, you should forget everything about the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. You should just practice. Even if you are keeping that in your head, that means again you are storing your storehouse with theory, which is not going to help you. You should just thrash everything and start practicing. Be that. Be that. Right? Otherwise, there's no point, right? What I explained here in Buddhism, it's a simple Paticca Samuppath, right? Nothing else, right? So you don't need to know that. That's why I didn't mention that. Irrelevant. Get it, go ahead, move. Don't get attached to it and sell oranges with that fellow. You need, you have a journey, please carry on with your train, right? So which is very, 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 very important. So get it carefully. So, avidya makes to become a part of the senses, the process, perceptions, chitta, thoughts, million thoughts, good, bad. Especially the mind has a tendency to get something, to give, a, give it a conclusion, either this side or that side. You call it manapa, amanapa. Whether you like it, you dislike it. Right? Then, right consciousness makes you watch the above process. Right? When you are going through just watch it. Right? Watching the above makes you a witness only. Just because you watched, you don't become part of the accident. But if you get involved, then you are part of the accident. Then you will say, okay, this guy came in the right way, this guy came in the wrong way. This guy was breaking, this guy was speeding, all this. No. You just don't come to any conclusion, okay? Dish, collusion happened. That's fine. Walk. Right? Don't get attached to it. Don't try to become the judge over there. Right? So the witness does not conclude. We are not a, your mind, inside your mind, most of our mind is a, like a supreme court. From the moment that we wake up till we go to sleep and during our sleep, it's a supreme court. We are giving judgments. Right, wrong, good, bad, nice, not good, red, yellow, green, amber, likewise. So, witness may watch, but walk away. The witness does not get attached. Do you understand this witness story? That's okay, we will answer, right? So, now let's go to a nice example, right? So, there's a male and a female, right? So, if I ask, what do you see here? Male and female is there, right? So, the girl is having a happy face and the man is also having a happy face, right? What are they experiencing right now? What are they experiencing right now? Each and every one of us had this, no? No, what have you experienced? Nothing but the touch. Nothing but the touch. Do you know, does this girl know what's running in this man's mind? If she knows, she would have ran. Right? If Whether this guy knows what's running in her head? No. Nothing. Those are like two locked farms. Right? But the touch, right? The touch is there. Then the desire. So when the touch is there, you felt good. Why you felt good? because of your pre-programmed mind. 
you felt good right why felt good not bad that's the two sides of the mind you felt good right felt free what is the opposite of free not so free right so you had all these things came in when these two were together you liked it hair the face that's why the grabbing the face right and then uh, basically experiencing the touch the smell and the person's voice all these things they are experiencing and being happy at the end of the day what is this It's just a thought, just another thought, just another thought came to your mind. But what happened is the thought went by, we stopped at the orange vendor. So they have stopped at the vendor, right? Now there is an attachment. Now there is a love, a desire. So put it to that cycle. It will tell you where it will go and end which is never, we are in the cycle. But there was a person walked by, looked at it and you looked at the person and then you went on your journey. For you to do that, you have to be in Upeksha, the middle path. You don't give a judgment. You don't like, dislike, good, bad. Right? So at the end of the day, we have fallen in love with what? With just another thought. Just another thought, a Nama Rupa. If you say, no, no, I felt in love with that person's hunk body, right? That is a Rupa. The hunk is the Nama, Nama Rupa. And that is what you have been uh, felt in love with. What is that at the end of the day? Through your senses, it processed, and that's a thought. Right? So if, you, if at all, if you ever, you know, liked something, you liked it, meaning you attached to it, you stopped there. You didn't become a witness. You gave up the job of becoming a witness. Instead, you attached to it. Right? So as far as you attach to everything that you see, hear, smell, feel, taste, you can't become a witness. Because you are in that, you are attached to those thoughts and you are continuously moving, right? So if, if this is like an engine, this is happening right now. So you are being part of this. How can you do dharana, dhyana, samadhi or focus in one point when you are inside a process? You have to come out and keep watching. Watch. And then, of course, you can, that's why watchful, watchfulness, consciousness being alert, all these things. So that we need to, first of all, get into. Thereafter, you will understand when you are watching, okay, these are thoughts. Another thought, another thought, another thought, another thought, another thought. Then you will basically, you know, when you keep watching, the mind knows, okay, now this, throwing this thought trump is not going to work. So it will slow down a little bit. It will slow down, but the mind is also having its own tricks. They will, at a point, they will come and, you know, give certain thoughts to you in a way that you get deviated with it. Very hard memories, very sorrowful memories, angry memories. Right? Those things will then start. So some people think when those things happen, oh, no, no, I have got a superpower. My chitta is so improved right now. I have got supernatural power. No, 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 no. You have meditated a little bit and that little bit has worked, right? And you just started the meditation. That's it. You haven't achieved anything. Right? That is one thing. Then, unless you learn to watch your mind, dharana, dhyana, it's not going to work. Right? Keep watching. Keep watching. We know how to watch gossip. We know how to watch, you know, when two people are even doing something, we just keep on watching. We don't go as a third wheel. You know, we watch. Right? Do that to your mind. Right? So don't become part of the gossip. You see what are these gossips and don't attach. Move ahead. Right? Then, once you watch your mind, the chitta nirodha or the nirodha parinama becomes possible. 
So when you keep on watching, what happens is, now take that um, accident example again, right? Now, now look at this lady, right? She is here. She is watching, right? Nobody is offering her a graph, a pen, a watch, or another graph book or a phone, right? All these things are now running in her head. Now, when she keep on watching, she feels, okay, I have to complete this particular report in two days. It's fine. Just fine, right? Just fine. When that thought comes, just watch it. If you feel, if you go in this direction, so the thought comes in your mind, I have to complete this report in two days time. I need to collect some data. I should talk to these people and uh, make some phone. What if she is called me? What if she says she don't know? Okay, so I will talk to the other person and try to get an email from her. Uh, now you have become a part of the accident. Right? Now you have gone to the accident scene. Now you are trying to open the car door. You are trying to break the windscreen, trying to take the people out. That extent you have gone. But when the thought comes, I have to prepare a report. Shh. I like to eat banana. Shh. Dinner, mom was saying she's making this particular book. Shh. I'm not trying to say you terminate that thought. Let that thought come and go. Let the next one come and go. Don't become a part of it. Don't go to the accident scene to do the work. Then you are, then your fingerprints are also there in the accident scene. Right? So when you watch your mind, the chitta, so when you don't pay attention to someone, what happens? So when you don't pay attention to, let's say, the girlfriend, boyfriend time, right? I don't want to go to the married level. So when you don't pay attention to your girlfriend or boyfriend, what happens? That breaks up, right? When that breaks up, what happens? The other person is saying, you are not giving attention to me and you tr somehow try to clinch. That stage will happen. Even when that happens, you should be able to stay, you know, calm, quiet, go on your journey, right? So that's what you call as the Nirodha Parinam, not, you know, getting away from your girlfriend or boyfriend. Nirodha Parinam means thoughts are coming. Thoughts get Nirodha itself. Let it get Nirodha. Again, something starts. It gets Nirodha. Again, something starts. It gets Nirodha. You don't get attached to thoughts. Right now, while you are working, or well, the presidential election is going on. Really? And then you walk. Let's see what's happening. Right? What you should do is, you are doing something, you are focused, you are doing something, and you know exactly what you are doing. Presidential election is going on. Right? Just think, ah, okay. Fine. We keep on your work. Right? Understand when the thoughts are coming and you know giving sensations for you to come, come, come. Let's go. Let's talk about it. Let's have some fun. Let's sit down, have a drink. Let's talk about it. Let's analyze this problem. Let's become a part of it. Don't get into that. Right? If you want to become the Nirodha Parinama, meaning, so actually when you are in this, you are in full awareness of yourself. Right? You are totally aware of what is running in your head. You are not part of that whole craziness. Right? You being aware, you are watching. Right? When you watch, unnecessary things will fall off. That's what happens in our life. Now, if you, if you are so attached to a particular tree at your garden, every day you go and water it, water it, water it, water it. And then what happens is if it doesn't grow, you are sad. If it does grow, then you are happy. Then some insect come and eat all the leaves, again you are unhappy. Then you want to come and take some chemical and kill the insect, then you are happy. All this thing happens, then why? Because this all the, the mind actually operates in binary code, one or zero. That's it. There's no two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, it's one and zeros, the binary code. Right? As far as it's zero, you want it to make it one. If it's one, you want to do it zero. Likewise.
right? So when you attach to that particular tree, then you, you are actually getting deviated with the tree. But if you are like, you know, you don't pay attention to that, right? Even if the tree is there, you don't know. Even if the tree becomes a big one, still you don't have a problem. If it dies, still you don't have a problem. If bees come there, no problem. If fly come and eat the leaves, still no problem. Right? Not getting attached with thought flows in your mind is important. Otherwise, at the end of the day, you feel really tired for not doing anything physically, but the thought process feel so tired, stress comes like that. But if your mind doesn't have things like early morning when you wake up, you know, okay, I have to go to work, I have to do five things, and in the evening I have to do class, eat, go to sleep, right? You plan your day. And during that day, you just do that. What happens is you sit down, before the moment you open your computer, some call comes, some nonsense, something, something, and then you get deviated. Right? Likewise, then once you get a one call, then you keep on thinking, oh, what if this happened? What if that happened? Will they approve this? And then so much activity is running in your head. You are deviated. Don't even think about Nirodha Parana. It's just entertainment. It's just intellectual kicks that you can give. I, I know this. I know that. Right? You can show another person, you know, I am a person, I know all these things. But practice, you are just a big machine inside, right? So once you get there, now if I, I will share this particular PowerPoint with you. If you read these sutras, these will look like Superman and some uh, some multiverse or some 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 superpowers, right? You will feel how can these things happen, right? These things are probable, possible. These are done by people. And uh, examples are there from here to 15 years back. But before that, the awareness, being a witness to your mind, maintaining consciousness is very, very important. Right? So we will discuss about these things and we will discuss about the others as well. So we will start the session from here. So what we discussed today is, before we move on to the things that we can do with our consciousness, we just understood what is consciousness, what is chitta, how that getting generated, and what is the cycle of our life, where the consciousness comes into the picture, why consciousness became uh, become a starting point for many things, and how we can go to the Nirodha Paritam. Right? Remember the train example. You are sitting in a train, you have a window, you're watching outside, just keep moving. So many things you see, so many things you hear, so many things you smell, people will come next to you, sit down and touch you. Don't get deviated with anything. You want to go from A to B, you go from A to B. Right? So that's the basically the lesson. Right? We will talk about the rest of the sutras in future. Right? We will um, close the session and then we will get into any questions that you have. Okay, so hands in Namaskaram, close your eyes, just for 30 seconds, see what your mind is processing. Now some noise came from my machine, now don't try to analyze what it is, let it go. Inhale. Purnamada, oh. Purnamidam, Purnat, Purnamudachate, Purnasya, Purnamada, Purnameva, Vashishate, Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. One more thing I was 
I got to my mind when I closed the eyes. So uh, while you are walking, while you're sitting in the train, you normally eat cashew, cashew, some sort of cashew, small ones, big ones, or something. You just eat like this, just eat, right? Imagine you sitting in Anapanasati meditation or mindfulness meditation. Your sitting is your train seat that you are seated in. Breath is the cashew that you eat. Right? So keep your mind on eating your cashew. Whatever you see, whatever you see, hear, smell, touch, right? Even the taste of the cashew, don't worry about it. Right? That is like your breath. So while you are seated, you have your breath. Focus on the breath. Focus on the breath. So many things are happening. So many thoughts are coming. So many things we hear, see, all these things. That's fine. Keep eating your cashew. Keep focused on eating your cashew. Then it's fine. Yeah? Good. So I'll uh, stop the recording.